Hello, it's Cake-tastic Cake Times. I'm your host, Jen, and I'm going to show you how to make sneakers out of gum paste. Hooray! I had a request for a sneaker, and I'm actually doing it. So, wow, I am so cool like that. All right, here we go. I made a Nike sneaker. You can make whatever sneaker you want. Just make sure you have a picture of it, whatever you're going to be making. I was sent a picture of the blue and white Air Nike. That's why I'm making that one. So whatever colors you want, whatever logo you need to put on the side, this at least will give you a good baseline on what to do. And as I'm talking through this, all I've done is rolled out some blue. It's going to become the bottom sole of the sneaker I'm making. I put two little marks on it. I don't know if you can see them there or not. Yeah, you can kind of see them. Just marking off the length of the shoe because I had to make it fit on the cake. And uh, you don't need it too big, otherwise it won't look right. And I'm not using a template, so if you guys have one and you print it out, then good on you. You're ahead of me in the game then. I do tend to freestyle stuff, as you might have seen. So that's all I'm doing here. And if you're kind of lazy and don't feel like making your printer work like me, this is how you do it. You're going to take your very long straight on the sides oval, trim out a curve on the side like I'm doing there. That's where the arch is, because if you flip your sneaker over, whatever shoe you're wearing, you're going to see it curves in on the arch a little bit. And just make sure you keep it longer and thinner. If anything, the shoe I made here could have been thinner. But since it was the first one I ever made, it's a learning curve. So, yeah, you have to bear with it. I used my knife, as you see, just to make little lines around the sides, just to make the pattern of the sole for the sneaker. Okay, and that's the white that I rolled out. These things, I want to say, are both about a quarter of an inch thick. It's not real thick at all just to give you an idea here. And the shoe was about five inches long in case you want to play along like that. So all I did was trace out the white, um, that little edge sticking out there. I'll end up trimming that off, smooth it all off, make it match up, and then set it right on top of your blue. Because um, the sneaker I was working with, it had the blue sole and then the white on top of it, and then you got into the actual sneaker. So that's what I'm trying to replicate here. Just don't forget to make sure your arch, yeah, you can see I put the arch back there. Make sure your arch stays arched <laughs> and that you're not too fat and you're plenty long because if you do make it too short or too fat, it's going to look like a toddler shoe or a baby booty. All right, what I did here is making the toe of the shoe. The shoe is going to be chopped up into pieces. I rolled out some gum paste pretty thin just to get the idea of the length and the size and I'm wrapping over the toe of the shoe. Since you're not going to see down inside the shoe, I went ahead and filled it just to hold the shape a little nicer. A little bit of water um, uh, between the two pieces is what holds everything together. I kind of cut that part out because if any of you have been following along or if you work with gum paste, you already know this. And yeah, I'm just saving a little time here. So I once again rolled it out nice and thin, the same thickness, made two rectangles just to um, get the idea of the sides of the shoe. Again, we're going to be putting this together in patches and then sealing it together. So don't worry about anything yet. I cut that angle off that one side because it's going toward the front of the shoe, so it, uh, it does slope down. Um, it's going to eventually become where the shoe laces connect, so you know how it kind of goes down the shoe, the top of your foot there? I use the circle cutter there to curve off at the top where I left it flat. That's going to be where you put your foot in if you notice it, it is curved around a little bit. So that's what I'm trying to show here. And whatever you do on the one side, you gotta do on the other. That's something I say a million times. So I laid it down on top. You gotta flip it over. Well, actually, you kinda don't with this one. Normally you have to flip it over. So it's good practice to flip it over, how's that? So yeah, turn it over, put it on your other piece and then just trace it out and then you'll have two the same size. And you did it without breaking a sweat. And yeah, so now I'm just trying to attach it. It becomes a pain because it's all wobbly. So I'm gonna use some paper towels and kind of curl them up and stuff them in just to keep the shape going properly. Okay, we had plenty of time to look at that. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody out there in, in YouTube land. Okay, now I'm going to make the tongue of the shoe. And like I said before, this is the first time I ever made a sneaker, so you all get to see my, my figuring it out as I go along. That giant long piece, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to make a nice long tongue. It'll go down into the toe. And I realized it was totally not necessary and that the tongues of shoes aren't curved like that. So I cut off the tip. I cut off those other little corner pieces there and then just kind of round it off because that's more of what a tongue looks like on a shoe. And it was also still pretty long. That piece is actually going to go down inside the shoe. So, yeah, I don't know what I was doing there. 
you know, this is, like I said, this is kind of just putting puzzle pieces together, only this is a puzzle where you can cheat. So if you need to trim it, if you need to stretch it or pull it a little bit, you can do that to make the pieces fit together. Now, what I did here, you see how I laid it on top. That is actually what we're going to do. Okay, so don't flip out on me yet. It's okay. Like I said, we're just patching this thing together. And a little bit of water, you want it to come up to the top of where um, that arc was on the side pieces, where it starts to curve, where you put your foot in. So make sure you get your length right and everything. So yeah, you're looking at that going, mm hmm, that's a very nice, interesting, poorly made loafer you got there. But just stick with me, okay? Here we go. More of the white, or whatever color you're using. This is going to go around the tongue of the shoe and around toward the toe. So I told you we're just putting pieces together here, and it'll it'll work, so just bear with me. It took me some time to figure this out. So you're bearing all the fruits of my labors here. And yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of white on it. I'm covering the edge of the tongue that I laid down there as well. It's like half on the tongue and half on the actual shoe part itself just to give you an idea of how much to cover. And a little bit of water, smush it into place. Don't press too hard, so don't actually smush it. Place it gently, and yeah. And I gotta say that there, you're gonna find you get certain borders for things that you just don't care about. <laughs> and I gotta say, making a sneaker cake was one of them. So the fact that someone requested a sneaker and I had coincidentally made it, I was just like, oh, thank goodness, because now I don't have to make one again. Certain things, man, they just don't appeal to me to make, and it's just you suffer through it, and then you record it so you could suffer through editing it and, and telling you guys about it. But it's just kidding, a total pleasure. I love it, yeah, mm, sneakers forever. Anyway, this is going to be, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's the part that goes around the toe near the sole and kind of connects the leather part of the shoe to the sole, but it's like the thin strip that they stitch into place, and you have, probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but you'll see in a minute or two. All right, what, okay, you're basically going to go a little bit past the tongue with the length. It sits on top of the white, and... Um, you want it to be pretty thin. So all I did, what I was doing there was just kind of marking off so that it, at the highest point, it will touch that little leather, the strip we put around that's gonna have the shoelaces in it. And the rest of it's gonna be real thin. So what I'm doing here is I'm leaving the edges high because that's where it comes up high. And I'm sinking the rest of it down low. And I'm using my cutter to make a night or my circle shape there to make a nice smooth curve of it going down. And then you're gonna see what I do. I'm gonna trim out the middle piece to make it skinny and flat so you won't have those two divots taken out. And if I could find my exacto knife, there we go. So at the lowest point of the circle, I'm doing it straight across. So once again, I freestyle everything, so it might not be perfect. And then using my little circle cutter, just making a little bit rounder on the two edges. You see, I kind of circled off the edges there on both ends. And now you'll probably get to actually understand what the heck I'm trying to describe here. Okay, you see how it goes there? It goes above the, two, the blue and the white of the sole, and it goes right at the bottom. And it's a little bit too tall, as you can see there, but that's okay. I'll fix it. I'm just going to take my knife and trim it off so that it matches up into that shoelace piece that we just put on. And you just oh so delicately pick it away, yes. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it was super crooked <laughs> underneath. Like the top wasn't bad looking from where I was hovering over it, but I didn't realize at the bottom that it was a little crooked. So watch your lines out there, folks. As you could see in the cake photo that I put up, I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? So... Learn from my mistakes, people out there. Okay, so now you can kind of see it's that, that wraparound part on the toe that protects it or holds it together or something. And that's what it is. Yes, the toe protector piece. Okay, this is going to be the back of the heel of the shoe. Uh, it's just the, I guess, the base of the back. Again, for me, it was blue because that was the, sneak, the picture of the sneaker I was sent. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just basically cutting out a rectangle and matching it up so that it will fit that gap I left. 
And this is going to be another piece that goes around the opening of the shoe. So it doesn't go across the tongue, but it matches up right where that piece we put for the laces stops. The blue will begin and it will wrap around the entire top. So I just rolled out a thin piece, um, cut it skinny and long, a little bit of water, and then pressing it into place. I'm a little bit rounding it off because it shouldn't be too rectangular since sneakers aren't quite like that. So you wanted to try to stay on the more circular, soft and cushy side. And let me tell you how much fun working with blue on top of white was because yeah, anytime you use that water to make things stick, you could smear some of the blue color onto the white. And oh, it just, it makes me smile just remembering how fun it was. All right, I cut out a half a circle here of the blue once again, and I'm wrapping it around the top of the back of the shoe just because that's what was there. And I guess shoemakers have reasons for all these pieces for coolness or effectiveness, I don't know. But yeah, that's all there was, just a half circle, slap it on the heel around that piece. This is gonna be the swoosh, because like I said, I made a Nike. And once again, I freestyle things because I am total badass like that. And it's just a very sharp curve with a very long tail. That's all it is. And as long as you are fat at the bottom of your swoosh and you go up in skinny, you got a Nike swoosh. If you're nervous about it, go find yourself a template. Um, for that matter, if you just find a nice black and white picture on your cell phone, you could probably trace it on a little piece of paper and don't waste your printer. So as you can see, it was real fat before, but I trimmed it out skinnier and skinnier until I got what I liked. And it looks a little, little gimpy there on the end, but it's okay. Don't worry about that part because if you're making a Nike, you know, don't have to worry about that part. Because once you place it on the side of the shoe, it will go up into the blue that you use to trim the opening. And you're just going to, oh, sorry, not the opening. That little half circle we put on the back for awesomeness sake. So it kind of blends up into that so you don't have to worry about it too much. All right, I've got my little rolly device thing that makes um, a nice seam print. And as you can see, I went right across the stitching in the middle of the blue because that's what it looked like, people. I don't know what to tell you. I wouldn't have done that if I had designed the shoe, but... Nike's not paying me, so there you go. And um, going around that wonderful toe protector piece that always frays on my kids' shoes because their toes get too long too quickly. So you go up, you go around, and then you're going to go back down the side just like that. And then you're gonna do it again along the bottom. Now be careful, don't press too hard when you do this because you are gonna deform the gum paste and cause it to smoosh out a little bit. So don't go crazy with the smooshing po out there. Okay, this is a tool I have. It's just a little pokey tool. I don't know what it's called. Pokey tool. And I'm putting the little air vents because it's a leather sneaker and your feet need to breathe. And also, if you don't have that little seam designing tool, you can use anything sharp and pokey to make your own seams, like a fork, you know, the little, little tongs. Um, you know, find yourself a sharp point on the back of your, your paintbrush, whatever. This is just an edible food coloring marker I'm using to show where the laces go because they were blue for some reason. I don't know why. And I am freestyling the Nike Air on the tongue. Um, it's just an edible marker. You can get them anywhere. Pretty much, yeah, everything I make in this video you can find at Walmart. So don't go crazy out there. Just get yourself a super Walmart that has a nice little um, crafty baking section. And other than the gum paste, I don't care for the Wilson gum paste that they sell there. I like to use uh, Sugar Art, I think it's called. I forget. I use it all the time. I can't remember. Ugh. Anyway, there's my awesome Nike Air. And now we get to do the laces. And this was also long and monotonous and tedious. So here we go. Okay, you're going to roll it out nice and thin and nice and skinny. You can't have giant fat laces that don't match up the size of the holes you made. So if you need to make your laces smaller, do it. If you need to make the holes in the sneaker bigger, do it. Make a match up because otherwise it's going to look totally wonky. Just like that wonky donkey video that lady did. That was very funny. So yeah, just thread them the way, lay them across each other the way you would uh, lace a shoe. So you're on the inside of the lace part, that white part that holds the laces, 
you're going to go from the outside. You can see under my thumb there, I have it going to the hole and then it goes up and then goes short of that trim. So it kind of looks like it goes under and then out the top again. Ugh, I'm explaining it so clearly. <laughs> All right, but just like you lace a shoe, make it look like that. Look at your feet if you need to. And then a little bit of a lace hanging off the end. You can make a little skinny part at the tip of it to make an aglet. Mine is aglet free because I forgot. And that's your sneaker. And oh yeah, uh, I didn't mention you could put a Nike on the other side. But anyway, hopefully you've liked this. Please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. I've got a ton. Thank you very much. Bye.